Hi everyone, it's Neve here and welcome to my art journaling channel. Today we're going to be playing with some of the new Dina Wakely August 2020 release and we're going to be using gloss sprays to make a crazy background. So I've started on a gessoed page in my um, Dina Wakely blue journal and I've just started pouring out some of my inks into my journal. So um, these are inks that I have nearly, or I have finished. I managed to finish these four bottles because they were mostly finished um, while I was doing this page, which is why I'm being fairly generous and not worrying about pouring them out um, because I wanted them to finish. I wanted them to be finished. So what I'm doing is sort of laying down some colour and then using the stem of the. Um, gloss spray to sort of move it out. You'll notice when they're going over the top of each other and because I've done this on a on a gessoed surface you get that sort of galaxy cells effect happening when they sort of resist off each other which is really really cool. I al I'm also going in to the center of the spine with some um, tissue paper or kitchen paper because it was pooling in the center of the book which while I didn't really mind I didn't want it seeping through to the other pages so just be aware that you may need to mop up some of the paint. If you put too much out you can always add um, some collage tissues or some transparent things that you can sort of mop up the extra paint from and get really cool effects. So this is me trying to finish off one of the last bottles. I had lots of um, a little bit of the ocean left and a little bit of the night left. So again I'm just pulling it, pouring it over in different areas using the stem to um, move the, the gloss spray around. You'll notice a difference between two books. This page was gessoed. The page that I just did in that smaller journal was not so it's actually soaking into the surface of the page a lot more. So once I'd done this crazy background, it was very, very dark, so I wanted to lighten it up somewhat. I'm going in with this stencil, which is called Done Is Better, and with some marine paint. So I wanted to make sure that it had sort of that bluey tone to it. With this side of the stencil, I wanted everything sort of um, right aligned and left aligned, so I'm just moving the stencil as I go along so everything's lined up with the edge of the page. So I've sort of got that zigzaggy thing happening in the middle of the page. So that helps to break up my surface a little bit. I then went in with some green paint with this new stencil as well. I think it's called Curvy Leaves. Um, <clears throat> it's probably a new favourite of mine, you know the uh, previous leafy stencil I really loved with its simple shape, so this is really cool because it goes around, it's just got that little bit more detail in it. When I was doing this, while I really liked the stencil, I used the wrong colour, it just did not um, stand out enough against that really busy background and it was probably a little bit translucent. So I decided to get some darker paint too, but I really didn't like it. So this is the bonus of acrylic paint. Because I'd heat set the <coughs> layer before, I was able just to wipe off the paint I really didn't like and start with a new colour, which is one of the reasons why I love acrylic paints. It's, it's very forgiving that, you know, if you really don't like it, and the paint is not dry, you can wipe it off, especially if your previous layers are dry. So instead of the green, I decided to go in with some gilt, so metallic, um, which gave a little bit more contrast on the page, and obviously sort of goldy metallics work well with the blue colours. Because I had paint left on my um, palette, sorry, meant to blank, I decided to go back to this page that I was doing beforehand and add some extra stenciling to this. And I, actually, that was a page I didn't like and I loved it with the stenciling over the top. So it was very fortuitous that in both situations I was able to do something that I didn't mind. <clears throat> now I'm just going around just to help pop out the images a little bit with a white pen. And this is something I like to do, particularly with leafy pencils. I suppose I find it very therapeutic. Um, and you know it's something I can do, I can sit there and doodle around these shapes without having to think much but my hand's still moving so I quite enjoy it. And even though I suppose in the final um, 
page, you may not see all this extra work. I know it's there and I've enjoyed doing it, so um, it's, it's fun. You can see I'm not being very careful about how I'm doing it. They're really, really scribbly lines. Um, my hand is moving pretty fast doing this. The pen isn't necessarily going over exactly where it's stenciled, particularly on those green ones because it was actually quite hard to see. Um, where some of that stenciling was so I am making up some of these lines as I go along but that's okay because it's just adding that extra pen work into the background and you can sort of see it popping out and just adding a little more detail and a little more um, definition to that stenciling in the background. You could use any colour to do this, I just like the white again it's not competing with the other colours on the page it's just sort of highlighting it. So once I'd finished doing the stenciling, I was playing around with some of the new stamp sets from Dina Wakeley as well. But I just couldn't get the right faces for it. The, the other faces I had were quite small and they just didn't quite work on the page. So I went back to my old favourites, which are these two larger faces from Dina Wakeley, and stamped them out onto some collage tissue. And in the end, I decided to go with this lovely lady down here, who's one of my favourites. Um, I just love her sort of wistful, wistful face on it. So I cut out both images just to have a bit of a check to see what I wanted to do. Um, and that's why, again, doing the stamping on the collage tissue is really handy because you can kind of audition your pieces before you put them on. Now I'm just using some collage medium to glue it down to the background and you can see it sort of goes translucent and disappears. Once I've finished I've got some of her Dina's new um, More Words tissue which is a whole packet of her Asemic writing and text-based quotes so um, it's one of my favorites. I absolutely adore it because I love having text in my, my work. It's one of my favorite things to have. So now I've got this image of a or a figure on my page and um, I now I can add paint or something to help pop it out. I've just got the sort of skeleton of it there. So I decided to go with my scribble sticks but I wasn't very patient. Um, the gel medium was still a little bit damp and um, I didn't want to tear the tissue by pressing too hard so I opted out of doing the uh, scribble sticks and actually just went in with a little bit of acrylic paint. So I'm using a fairly dry brush. I think the colour I'm using is sand and then a little bit of um, carnation for the lips and so on. I just wanted it really really subtle so having a dry brush meant I could sort of really spread it out so it's more like a glaze over the top rather than a thick layer of acrylic paint. I'm also going in with a little bit of blushing so having that a little bit more of a pink tone and then the hair, I decided to take some cues from my background and put some more of the gilt in. So she's got metallic hair which helps to um, repeat the colours from the stenciling in the background. So I'm really having <laughs> mental blanks today as I'm talking. I do apologise. So I've just put a little bit of gilt on her dress as well. And as you know, if you follow this channel a lot, one of the major things that I always do with my figures is to put in the whites of the eyes. It just uh, frames the face, it makes it look like it's supposed to be a face and it gives you a point of reference for um, looking at the figure. By just putting a little bit of colour around the outside of that text, again it also puts the focus on the colours on the inside. So I haven't added extra blues and greens, but by putting some other colours on the outside, it actually boosts the colour on the inside. It's a bit of a, a funny old trick to do that. Then I've just used a um, stamp from one of the new stamp ranges, which is when things change inside you, things change around you, which I really loved and it really spoke to me this day when I was doing this um, all about change because lots of change is happening in, in my world and in, in the world in general at the moment. So change is definitely on my mind at the moment and I suppose once I had that quote on the page the rest of it kind of came together a little bit. 
I was finding I really loved the figure on the other side and I've just used some Stabilo oil pencil to do a bit of a border around the outside and um, pop it out from the background. But I was finding that the left hand page needed something. So I went in with these large alphabet masks and I'm just using some Payne's Grey. So this isn't a true black, it's um, a really dark grey. I find I use it an awful lot more than um, black because it's just not as um, overpowering on a page. It kind of blends in. It's, you still give the darkness that you need, but it blends in enough that it's um, not in your face. So I've stenciled out the word invite change, and then I'm going to go around with my white pen and just put a little bit of shadowing or highlighting, I suppose, with a white pen on my letters to again pop them out from the background a little bit. And that's basically the finished page. So it was a lot of just playing around with my gloss sprays, pouring out all the extras I had in the background, stenciling, stenciling, over stenciling, getting carried away with stenciling, doing some doodling over the top and then adding my focal images. So I suppose this is a, a page of my usual um, process and as you can see I don't often have a plan when I begin and sometimes it gets a little bit out of hand but you can always rescue it by doing you know just keep going you can always come together with something in the end so I hope you found this useful thank you so much for watching until next time bye for now